local Muslim leaders describing yesterday's uh, Verulam mosque attack as an act of terror. Also saying just a short time ago here on Newsday that it bears the hallmarks of the extremist group Islamic State. One person has died, two others were wounded when three men stormed the Imam Hussein mosque yesterday afternoon. Some expert analysis now from well-respected and well-known Muslim theologian and academic Professor Farid Esak. Professor, good afternoon to you and welcome. First of all, broadly, what, what is your understanding of this? What do you think happened? Uh, well, um, I'm convinced right from the word go when we understood what happened, uh, that it was indeed a terrorist attack and terrorist attack as different from, say, uh, the kind of political attacks or political murders even that we have. By a terrorist attack, I mean um, uh, the targeting of a particular individual or group on, for the base for their beliefs, for their beliefs or for ideological uh, purposes. And uh, the manner of the killing, <coughs> um, the fact that it was a Shia mosque that was targeted, um, this is a kind of brutality that South Africans in general, even the very few Muslims that may be drawn to the ISIS kind, kind of uh, ideology, it's not common to how South Africans. Uh, so I would suspect that it is a foreign crowd that was in South Africa. It does have the more the, the hallmark of how ISIS uh, operates. Explain that to me. <coughs> what are those hallmarks? What are the particular <coughs> um, uh, What are the particular points that lead you to that? Conclusion? Okay, um, the kind of crude violence, uh, the idea of beheading uh, beheading uh, a, a person, um, and then connected to that is that's not sufficient. Um, South Africans would generally have gone for guns. Um, South Africans aren't familiar with the, the beheading of, certainly not in a, a religious context. So it's a religious, uh, this thing's venue, nothing else was stolen, completely unconnected to ordinary crime um, and the method, uh, the method of beheading. And then of course the target, a Shia mosque rather than a Sunni mosque, and these are the two major uh, sectarian tendencies amongst Muslims. Might this then, if your argument is, is to, to extend your argument, would this then be an unauthorized cell operating in the name of ISIS, or would it have been sanctioned uh, by uh, the organization itself well, externally? Well, nothing that the organization does at the moment, other than major operations inside Iraq or Syria, um, requires authorization in that sense. These are local characters and by local, they could be embedded from abroad, based locally. They are inspired by ISIS. They may or may not have had training by ISIS, but that's really inconsequential for them. These are loan operators working as two or three, inspired by ISIS. There is an organic connection with uh, videos and uh, following uh, ISIS and adhering to ISIS on social media. But one doesn't require a leader sitting somewhere on the outskirts of right. Baghdad or to be, to be following his or her. Would we expect then in coming hours for some responsibility to be claimed by ISIS then? Very unlikely. Uh, ISIS isn't going to claim responsibility for this, um, in part because ISIS has got no war with South Africa. It wouldn't want to uh, antagonize South Africa unnecessarily. So uh, there wouldn't be any uh, uh, claims of responsibility on the part of ISIS. But ISIS knows that the message is out, that we are everywhere, and that we can get our ideological enemies everywhere. Why this particular mosque in this small town north of Durban? Well, uh, in South Africa, other than small makeshift uh, buildings where in Shias uh, pray, we really only have three mosques, three Shia mosques in the entire country. Uh, one in Edenvale in Johannesburg, the other in Ottery in Cape Town, and then this particular mosque in Verulam. And this was the first <laughs> constructed Shia mosque in the country I've been to. Absolutely. After that was Verulam and more recently in Cape Town. Um, and so in some ways, I mean, there has been uh, regrettably an officially sanctioned uh, anti-Shia rhetoric uh, from the mainstream Muslim communities uh, for sectarian and religious reasons. Uh, they've always stopped short of calling for violence against the Shias. In fact, they've often emphasized that, no, 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 we must be peaceful in our protest against them. But generally, our leading cleric bodies have uh, gone pretty much to the step of declaring that the Shias are not Muslims. And so there is a kind of 
generated antagonism, it's in some ways, you know, the same. Uh, if there is an atmosphere of anti-Semitism, just verbal anti it makes attacks on Jews uh, actually much easier. What is the likelihood of reprisal? Absolutely none. <clears throat> absolutely none. Uh, the Shia community in South Africa um, is generally uh, not interested in the reprisal. It's a small community. They're struggling for legitimization, for legitimacy inside South Africa. But it will be a very <clears throat> angry and disaffected community surely at this point. It will be a pained community rather than angry. A pained, a distraught community and a community that is terrified. The month of Ramadan starts in the middle of next week. Uh, when there's uh, <clears throat> a heightened uh, presence at mosques. Mosques are filled every day, uh, intense religious activities for a whole month, and people will be anxious and afraid. Now, of course, the community will probably put up a brave face and say, we will not be intimidated, we will not be bullied, but underneath the surface, I can well imagine the leaders of this community being quite afraid. But there is no question or possibility, I think, of any kind of retaliation. It does also open up a, 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 an ancillary debate, I think, about how things might be changing in this country in terms of religious tolerance or intolerance. I think it's far too early to say that. <clears throat> I think it's far too early to say that. Um, there has been spats, uh, whether it is amongst the Shembe Church in the KwaZulu Natal uh, or uh, the Zionist Christian churches, where there are contestations for power and so on, and clashes and so on. And, the similar goes for amongst the uh, Muslim community. Uh, but generally, the very strong South African ethos of tolerance and coexistence and depending on each other for survival and so on, I mean, I really believe that that will carry us through this. And so I don't anticipate any escalation necessarily in sectarian uh, violence. Just a quick answer, because time regrettably is against us. I know you are a religious scholar, scholar you're not a, a security expert, but at this point, do you have faith uh, confidence in the authorities uh, to investigate this effectively? Uh, absolutely. I think that the intelligence services uh, has done a remarkable job until now to protect South Africa. I mean, you know, very often we measure, we, we gauge the effectiveness of our intelligence services by what happens. Intelligence must also be gauged by what doesn't happen. And if it weren't for their vigilance, we would have been in a far bigger mess than what we are. So I think that they're doing a great job, and I'm quite confident uh, that they will get to the heart of this sooner rather than later.